Hello guys and welcome to another Car Expose video. On that subject of overheating in traffic, today we have my own car, a 2002 Mini Cooper S R53. And if you follow the, the channel long enough, you probably remember, I did have a overheating problem about a year, year and a half ago, which ended up being my power steering pump. It was seized up, blowing one of the fuses in the same circuits and bringing the circuit down. I also, in that video, I noticed, I'm gonna leave links for that video in the description. I've noticed my, my cooling fan only worked in certain positions, so the segments inside, inside that motor wasn't, wasn't very good. And I knew this day was coming. I've got a good secondhand fan, which I'm gonna have to do some modifications to the loom. It does have a new thermostat, which is good. But let me show you the scan tool. The fan's not working. The one that I have in my car now is not working. And I'll show a little bit of the system before I remove the bumper and everything. All right, so we've got the fan connectors here all connected up no problems with the wiring i do see some pokey pokey that happened here before me so i don't think they could find you know they couldn't figure out the power steering pump was bringing the system down but anyway it's so going to active test electric fan relay stage one activate nothing you can probably hear you can probably hear the relay clicking you be able to leave the microphone here. I'm gonna activate now. So that's number one. So it's clicking. Then go to for speed two. You're gonna hear the click again. There you go. So I'm pretty sure the fun the fun is our problem here. So now I've got to lift the car up. I'm not sure if we're gonna remove the wheels. But this splash guard, a few clips that you have to remove it. And I've noticed coolant leak here, right on this connector. So let's see what I can do about that. Uh, pretty much from end service mode, as they call it. Uh, I'm pretty sure the system's working. It's just a cooling fan. Yeah, let's get cracking. found our leak we were right it's right on this edge here let me get back it seems to be right on that screw there yeah, I wasn't planning to take this off but let's try to tighten that let's see if it stops that doesn't seem to do anything maybe the seal has gone wasn't planning to remove this radiator off, but I think I'm gonna have to just to we'll see, verify the seal there. By the way, forgot to mention, I was pressurizing the system. So it was about 15 PSI, about, I don't know, 20 minutes ago, something like that. Yeah, so I was pressurizing the system. That's why it started leaking so badly.
Ta-da! Uh, let's see what's going on with this radiator. It seems to be leaking from this corner here. Even the bolt was a little bit red with anti-freeze. And as you can see, this is pretty new. So the only thing I can see now is this side where it's, it's leaking because it goes like this, right? Yeah, it goes like this. So this bottom side which seems to be leaking, the seal here, it's, I won't say it's damaged, but it's kind of got caught on something there. See this side is nice and round. This side is sort of like crashed. Uh, yeah, you can see a little bit of red there as well. I think that was the issue, you know. We're going to ch change this seal. And hopefully fix this problem as well. All right, let's use some silicone spray there because it seems to be the size that I should be using. For some reason doesn't want to go in. Let's put in this part here. I finally worked out what's happening here. So this piece, because I think the O-ring wasn't fit properly, I was pushing, it was pushing this sort of uh, connector here up. And obviously with the heat cycle, it's misshaped now. And it wasn't, to be honest, it wasn't leaking that much. But obviously, you know, what you saw there uh, it was leaking quite a bit. It was because when I pushed the radiator out, um, obviously that moved a little bit. But as you can see, I don't know if you can see that well, but there's a huge gap. Even when I put the screws in here, one one side sits flush and the other side is like proud. So it's misshaped now. If you see, if you look at this side, it's nice and flush. But this, this one here is impossible. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put this thicker O-ring, hoping that somehow will seal. But, uh, you know, aftermarket parts, I think it was in the assembly. The problem was in the assembly. They didn't obviously see that that O-ring got caught in the corner. But I'm going to put this one, hope for the best. If it doesn't work, obviously I change it. I changed the radiator. I have both cooling fan here, so you can see the difference. I just opened the cover, and as you can see, this is the one that was in my car. Got a second relay there, and an extra connector. And this one, the one that I bought, you don't have, so I'm gonna have to modify a little bit. This blue tape that you, you can see here, electrical tape, is because this, this resistor was replaced, so it's brand new in the past. And is one of the things that we're gonna need because my resistor is the problem here. Well, I've got two problems. The fun segments is actually good, but at some point where the bearing is kind of rusty and you can hear the, the noise it makes, And when it starts to squeal like this, it becomes really, really hard to move. There you go. So the bearings is the problem. And what I believe it happened here, and you can see a little bit of burning there as well. I don't think that's normal. Because in certain points where the bearing was, you know, impeding the, the, the fan to move, the car was still commanding the front on, 
the resistor was getting hot and the thermal fuse on the resistor itself, I think it blown. So this, this resistor is no good, but I'm gonna show you, show you, gonna show you now. All right, so I have my fun, my original fun grounded in the body of the car through the black wire, which goes straight to the motor, is this black wire here. And obviously the other side is this blue. I'm gonna use my test light, um, connect it to, to power, and they're gonna connect to the blue side and then it lights up. All right, so now I'm going to start spinning the fan. I'm spinning the fan now. And the light doesn't go out, so all the segments in the motor is actually all right. But that's what I was doing, I was just spinning the fan the lights have never gone out, so all the segments are good. But because it's so hard to turn, depending on where it stops, the speed one can't actually move the motor. And because it's powering up the circuit, this resistor gets hot. And then obviously you have the fuse there for protection. Don't know how hot it needs to get, but th there's an open on this fuse here. So oh, it's a resistance measurement there. As you can see, open circuits. Let's get to those two points here. Let's see if I've got open circuits here. No, I don't. Oops. Well, so I'm pretty much bypassing the thermal fuse. And there you go. And then if I go on a fuse itself, open, open circuit. So yeah, that's what happened. It's just the, the EC was commanding the fan. The fan was seized basically, it wasn't moving. The resistance was getting hot and, the, and obviously your protection, the fuse, the thermal fuse bur um, blown. And if we go to the new one or second hand one, See if I can show you there. There you go, as you can see, one ohm. So that's good. Yeah, I'm not gonna test the, the thermal fuse there because it's, it's a good resistor. So right, I'm gonna try to explain how the system works. So you have one relay in the engine bay, which is this R3 here, commanding speed one. And then you have the second relay here by the phone controlling speed two. But the important thing here, this ping 87, these two here, they are connected together, okay? As you can see there. Now two, two connectors, the smaller connector will be controlling the relay two, powers and grounds from, from the ECU. And the ECU, I believe, is gonna be controlling uh, power, 12 volts on this side. Doesn't really matter, but I think they, this will be commanding 12 volts here in this case. And then the bigger plug, you have the black wire here, which gives constant ground to the motor there. And then the thinner wire will be a speed one output from the relay one. So when the ECU commands relay one, it closes, sends 12 volts here. And then you have a constant 12 volts on this thicker wire which is your fuse 11, 50 amp, this one here. Now let's talk about speed one. So speed one is the thinner wire. As Like I said, the ECU will be commanding the relay one, it closes, send 12 volts through this thinner wire here, goes through the resistor, comes back out in the middle of the connector, which is pin 87. I don't know if you can see it there, but the middle one, which is when the relay is in, will be connected together through the relay, 87, two points here. Comes back out the blue wire, which feeds 12 volts and to the motor and give you speed one. For speed two, they should be controlling this relay through this wire, commanding this relay on with powers and grounds, P 
pin H6 and H H5. Closing the relay, so you have constant power on pin 30 there through the sticker wire, fuse 11, 50 amp, close the relay, and then send 12 volts to this blue wire, which is a straight connection to the motor, giving 12 volts. I hope it makes sense. And um, I just got to fix this pins here. I hope I don't break it. Swap, swap the resistor. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this wire here and connect the new motor. And I'll obviously solder it, put some liquid tape on. I've got some cloth tape as well. Do a tidy job and then it should, should last. Right, so it's fixed up. Got the, the wires connected there. I use some electric tape, some shrink tube over. This one as well. I just need to do the ground. So I'm gonna show you how I do the wiring normally. I wanna fix this in place first because I wanna see the, the size that I need to cut the ground here. Did you speak to mommy about that? Okay, bye. Right, so now we can see the size that we need. Let's put that cable there. there. Used to be a holder in here, but it's not here anymore. I haven't got my Y stripper at the moment because I, a friend of mine got it. All right, so shrink tube. I just twist them together. Uh, I'm not saying this is the right way, guys. This is the way that works for me. I never, ever had any any comebacks for wire repairs. It's a little bit difficult this part because I'm just using a soldering iron here. It doesn't really get that hot for this size of wire. But we should be able to do it. Make sure the wires are nice and clean, nice and shiny, otherwise you're not gonna get good print penetration. I'm getting a good penetration here, so I'm happy with that. I just feed through and I'll let it sort of like absorb the solder. All right, so this is the outcome. Doesn't look too pretty, but not too bad. Like I said, the wires are too too thick. But um, yeah, that's not coming off. That's that's good. And this li liquid electric tape is pretty good. Pretty good stuff. It protects really well against the, the weather. Good blob there. Mine is a little bit liquid because it was drying out. And I've noticed the other day I put, I, uh, I put some thinner in it. But give a good blob. Okay, so now I'll wait around 10 minutes. Right, so after 15 minutes, the liquid tape is dry. See if we can get the shrink wrap over it. Hopefully it's not too big. I'll choose more, actually. Right, that's it.
All right, so that's done. Put it back where it should be. Okay, so now we are ready to install it. Job finish. Just gonna show you the finished result here so you can see all the cable. I don't know if you can see it there, but it's all rooted properly underneath there. Another thing I had to replace, I don't know if you noticed, but this plug, the pins was actually damaged inside. And it's one of the things that I've noticed, that's why speed two wasn't working. And uh, because obviously you don't need the, the resistor for it to work on number two, but those pins were just squashed inside there. Didn't make any connection. So luckily I replaced the connector with my power steering pump fan. I had the same connector, so I sold it in again, repaired the wire and now it's working. I repaired the pokey poker they did it before here with some liquid tape, just done that. And now, just about to test it. I'm not gonna do a screen record now because I'm just finishing this video. But speed one, activate. You're not gonna be able to see it, but you probably hear that. Now, speed two, stage two. Activate. There we go. All right, so it's all hunky dory, all working. This is your relay for speed one. This is your 50 amp fuse for the power feed for the, the second speed relay, the uh, terminal 30. This 50 amp fuse there. And the funny thing is, I'm not really quite sure, I don't know if it's a signal the AC requires but this relay for speed one always clicks and you don't need it for speed two obviously but it clicks for speed one and speed two as I showed before but let me I took the relay out try speed two again as I, as you can see it's working always click so I don't know if it's in case your speed one fails it, it knows and activates Speed two, I'm not quite sure, but that was interesting to me. Another thing that I would like to show you, obviously the, the resistor is down there, well hidden, but you, you can actually utilize the motor, the fan motor, which is part of the circuit to check to check the resistor. So if you check the resistance bef between the, your ground, the black wire and the thin red wire, as you can see there, I'm back probing those wires. And then we'll go to resistance. You can see that we've got... going to have a little bit more resistance, I guess. But there we go. It should be... When it's stabilized, it should be around one or two. But you can see there. All right, so that it's going through the motor windings there. Going through the resistor and coming back so you can check your resistor this way because you can't get access to it so black wire which is the ground and the thin red wire which is your your 12 volts and one more thing i don't know if you're going to be able to see very well but it's not leaking so the repair actually worked there's no leak there anymore it's nice and dry it's not losing any coolant anymore so the result so that's it guys, the old goes back on the road, it's not overheating anymore. I filled up with coolant, bled it, I let it run, warm up. When it got to about 105 degrees, the fun came on. Another thing I was going to mention, when you do like the repair with thick wires, uh, it's probably better to have like a torch, soldering torch, because it wasn't ideal, but I'm sure it, I won't have a problem. It's all sealed up with uh, liquid tape, pretty good. And uh, that's it, she's, she's back on the road. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you enjoyed this one, make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any comments, just leave it below and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.